you, sir. Um, I'm not going to put the uh, congressman I think has arrived here on, on so what we're going to do is we've readjusted the program a little bit. I think um, what we're going to do is have uh, Ron um, Bruno from Harris Excellus, who's the chief engineer, and talk about the role that timing is playing in some of the work that he's been involved with in the ADSB program with the FAA. So um, we're going to queue up a few slides that he has here, and Ron, I'll ask you to come up. Please. Thank you. It takes, it takes a while to get bright. Let me know when you can see it, when it's bright enough. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is about timing for aviation and air traffic management. And it's a bit of a story about how my company got involved in, uh, in uh, E-Loran. Uh, because uh, we do a lot of work for the FAA uh, in air traffic management. And normally, when you talk about air traffic management, the first thing you're talking about is navigation. So turn the slide. So when you're having a discussion of importing a new technology you know, into aircraft avionics, quickly everybody realizes, well, that's a decade away at least, and that's the end of the discussion. It's very, very far on the time horizon. Um, but there's a much more immediate need uh, in aviation, in the ground infrastructure. Their need for precise timing uh, is very important, and if e were providing a signal in space today, it could be absorbed and used to create timing resiliency and the resiliency in the air traffic management applications that they support, and it can do that with very, very short lead time. Next slide. So if you look at sort of air traffic management as requiring a stack of systems that all must work, and you just go from the bottom, you have power. The power grid needs frequency and phase timing to work well. Commercial telecom needs clocks. Then there's dedicated FAA telecommunications infrastructure, or FTI, that's a system that Harris operates for the FAA. There's a network of stratum one clocks that it needs to maintain synchronization among itself and with commercial telecom. And then on top of that, there's the surveillance and broadcast system, which is one network that provides ADSB and uh, other surveillance services. That requires 30 nanosecond timing at remote radio stations uh, to, do, to do its complete job. So basically, this shows sort of the whole stack and timing is required. Now I want to talk about the two systems that Harris provides and give you a little insight the way a system can give the appearances of being redundant, but when you look what's behind the curtain, Everything then is traceable to, to GPS, and that's what we're typically worried about. So the next slide. So um, the uh, surveillance and broadcasting system basically is over 650 radio stations uh, that receive positions from aircraft uh, at ground stations. Those positions get very accurate time tags. Those time tags and that timing accuracy is derived from GPS. Those time tag position reports are used in data processing centers to do a process one called validation of ADSB reports. In other words, is this a real report or, or is it coming from a location that isn't consistent with their position, uh, their reported position? So that's an anti kind of spoofing. Um, capability that relies on precise timing. And then there's a completely independent way of getting position, and that is receiving the precise time tag position reports from three or more ground stations and doing a multilateration solution, all of that, uh, on that. So, so basically, it looks like validation and multilateration are independent, basically, of GPS, uh, or independent, rather, of the of uh, the ADSB surveillance via GPS. But if, the G if there's a wide-scale outage of GPS, 
the precise timing capability is lost at the radio stations, so we lose a lot of the validation and the backup capability. In order to maintain that, we need to put precise, expensive and precise cesium clocks to have to maintain, to maintain time at the required position for a few days. Um, as the chief engineer on this program, I realized over a year ago, wouldn't it be great if we had Eloran? It would be so much cheaper, it would be so much better, and it would be an instant solution, far superior and cheaper than putting cesium clocks at many remote ground stations. So, and that would provide um, truly resilient and precise time, completely independent of GPS. And I've drawn in, in a dotted line, basically radio stations receiving timing from both GPS and Eloran, and if there was a signal in space, we can sort of roll out that program immediately. The next slide basically shows a similar situation for FAA telecommunications infrastructure. So in red there is basically what's called an FTI node. The FTI node has a stratum one clock that distributes time through the node. It's fed by GPS. The backup for that is a circuit from a commercial telecom, something called the DS1 or T1. It's, a, it's a, about a one and a half megabit sort of a, a clock speed. Uh, and that's the backup timing for that node. Uh, but if you look what's providing that backup timing, it's typically another GPS receiver. So again, if you had a wide scale uh, GPS outage, the, the appearance of redundancy would be, would, shown, would be shown to be false. Again, this could be easily remedied by if you had access to an Eloran signal, the stratum one clocks inside the FTI nodes could be fed by both GPS and Eloran and would be robust to an outage of, of either one. Um, and so the next slide then is um, essentially the wrap up. Um, if a nationwide Eloran, Eloran timing service was available today, accurate timing provided could significantly increase the resilience of ATM solutions in the event of GPS outages by providing an independent timing source to surveillance and broadcasting uh, system that I've been the chief engineer on, uh, FAA telecommunications, and other FAA infrastructure, as well as the underlying commercial infrastructure that ATM and so many important uh, applications to the economy are built on. Um, and with an Eloran system in space, the lead time and cost for implementing timing via Eloran in the ground infrastructure is very small. It's not the decades of of implementing a new navigation system in aircraft. This is putting timing receivers that exist in ground infrastructure. It would be, uh, it would be very easy to do. We're currently evaluating the timing performance of Eloran in the laboratory along with Ursinav, uh, who has many years of experience in this. And we're in the planning stages of demonstrating the performance of Eloran timing uh, for WAM in the FAA's test network uh, which is associated with the surveillance and broadcasting system. Again, it's a pleasure being here tonight. Thank you for listening. And are there any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you.